I, Excellency Dr. Rob Davis, Minister of Trade and the Industry of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Mandizi Mpaswa, High Commissioner of South Africa in Mozambique, Dr. Luisa Diogo, former Prime Minister of Mozambique, Mr. Daniel David, Chairman of Soiko Group, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I, I would like to start my presentation by taking this opportunity, first of all, to congratulate Soiko Group on organizing this event and thanking its chairman, Mr. Daniel David, for extending the invitation of Millennium Beam to be here today. Uh, my presentation will, will be divided in, in three parts. Uh, the more important part, it, it will be the Mozambique Economic Overview and Prospects. I will go through afterwards a little bit of the relationship between Mozambique and South Africa. But of course, this part was very well already presented by, by I Excellency the Minister. And finally, I will say a few words about, uh, about the bank Millennium Beam. Mozambique has enjoyed a remarkable economic growth over the last decade, uh, driven by uh, macroeconomic stability and uh, the outlook of mega projects coming from the country natural resources, namely coal and natural gas. In fact, from 2009 to 2014, Mozambique was the fastest growing non-oil economic in SADC region with a growth averaging 7% per year, thanks to a large inflows of foreign direct investment, called FDI, low inflation and the decreasing interest rates. Sound macroeconomic management, political stability and the large scale foreign investment projects and the significant donor support contributed significantly to this performance. Nonetheless, the economic growth showed signs of structural imbalances, notably in the balance of payments, mainly due to the high dependency of Mozambique on imports that are not offset by exports, and the chronic and worsening fiscal and external deficit. Those factors have been offset by the very strong increase on FDI, the foreign direct investment related with the mega project, as I mentioned, by contribution from donor countries, as well with the use of public debt with a clear tendency to increase its weight on the GDP of the country. In spite of the imbalances that I mentioned, the economic structure of Mozambique has been diversifying, as you can see from the chart. While the agricultural sector is still the most important contributor to the GDP, with 23% of the GDP, the mining sector has seen the greatest growth in the recent years, followed by financial services. The mining sector growth was reflected a rapid expansion in the coal production in the Moatis Basin, in TET, also benefiting from the conclusion of the TET Nakala railway link. However, since late 2015, Mozambique faces adverse shocks with strong impact on its economic performance. A strong depreciation of the local currency led to a high inflationary pressure with impact on imports and internal demand. Plus, following news on the undisclosed debt, the country faced successive downgrades by credit rating agencies, which have weakened investor confidence and reduced foreign direct investment. And even more important, external partner, partners froze budget support and the IMF canceled its program. So reducing the FDI and budget support reduced the availability of foreign currency, leading to a strong depreciation of the medical and give, given the large imports required to fuel the economy, which also led to a strong inflationary pressure, forced the central bank to adopt a very strict monetary policy and hiking the interest rates. Naturally, these adverse shocks affect the economic growth. Real GDP growth dropped in 2016 to an estimated 15-year low of 3.3%, Mozambique's 
currency lost significant value over the previous year. Uh, in fact, lost more than 50% against US dollar. And this strong depreciation of the medical contributed to the acceleration of inflation that topped 27% in November 2016. Plus, the revelations of the undisclosed debt aggravate Mozambique fiscal deficit and the public debt rose to above 100% of the GDP. In spite of the current economic environment, the fundamentals that drive growth in Mozambique remain very strong and should lead to a recovery in the near future. Mozambique has significant gas reserves, positioning it as a potential key player in the energy supply market in the region. Recent developments indicate progress with Rovuma Basin gas projects, such as the forward purchase agreement for gas for the Coral South floating facility, which brings the final investment decision for these multi-billion projects to be announced this week on 1st of June in Maputo. This is clearly a very good news for Mozambique. In the meantime, mega projects may benefit from a boost in the near term from an improving outlook for the key commodities prices. And we start to see both mega project exports and FDI increasing already in mid-2016. Also, prices for, for aluminum and gas, two of Mozambique's largest exports, are expected to begin recovering in 2017, which would further boost the recovery of country's economy. Similarly, a rally in coal prices and the new railway Tetnakala improved the prospects of coal exports. Despite the country's current debt service challenge, the projected economic boom associated with the development of the gas sector is expected to have multiple positive externalities for the rest of the economy and to provide numerous opportunities for firms looking to expand into Mozambique. So it's clear that the potential for growth of Mozambique economy, economy remains strong and the major gas, coal and power projects will be the drivers of the economic growth and business opportunities. The inauguration of the coal terminal at the port of Nakala and the ra railway line is expected to increase exports and increase the production for Moatis mine from 8.7 million tons in 2016 to 18 million tons in 2018 which would probably be enough for coal to overtake aluminum as the largest source of export revenues for Mozambique. On the other hand, the country's gas industry has the potential to be a major driver of long-term growth, and when gas production will reach its peak in 2015, Mozambique is set to become the third largest LNG exporter in the world after Qatar and Australia, and also a strong regional player on power supply. Therefore, beyond 2017, uh, 2017, we expect the economic recovery to gather pace gradually as market confidence recovers. Real GDP growth is expected to recover slightly over 4% in 2017. Inflation should drop to below 15%, with a continuous slowdown in the following years. Foreign direct investment inflows are expected to return, which will stabilize currency and foreign reserves and a new IMF program is expected and is pivotal to regain both markets and partners' confidence to reinstate budget support and to attract further investment. Talking now a little bit about the relationship between Mozambique and South Africa, what we see is that South Africa has been present in this growth period of Mozambique through strong investments in, uh, in the country as the Excellency Minister well detailed. In 2016, in fact, South Africa was a large investor and also the most relevant trade partner for Mozambique. And South Africa invested in 55 greenfield projects amounting to a total of almost $1 billion only in 2016. As a result, and although Mozambique top 10 bilateral trader partners are likely to slightly change when the LNG projects came online, 
South Africa will, rem will remain for sure one of the more important investors in Mozambique. In terms of trade, South Africa is clear the major trade partner of Mozambique, representing 30% of the imports and 21% of the exports, and is expected that South Africa will remain being the more important trade partner of Mozambique over the medium long term. Mozambique biggest supplier, South Africa being the Mozambique bigger supplier due to the proximity of borders and also bilateral relationship between both countries for a long, long time. In fact, Mozambique imports from South Africa most of its needs, namely machinery, vehicles, fuel, and food. Mozambique's most valuable exports are aluminum, gas, and coal, and also electricity. Millennium Bank, Millennium Beam is originating from Portugal, belonging to Millennium Group, is present in near 20 countries and spans for the five continents, with a strong presence in Europe and Africa, and as well with partnerships throughout the globe. In Mozambique, Millennium Beam was founded in 95 as a partnership between Millennium Group and the Mozambican state, and following a series of M&A transactions that happened in Portugal, would reflect on Mozambique as well. By the early 2000s, Millennium Beam became the largest bank in the country. In terms of shareholders today, Millennium Beam have the major shareholder is Millennium BCP, which is 67%, and the rest are state-owned companies or other local shareholders. Millennium Beam is a, a universal bank reaching all segments of clients, mass market, affluent clients, private clients, SMEs, corporate and investment banking, with a specific servicing platforms to serve uh, all type of clients and to give our customers an excellent level of service. And Millennium Beam has the largest commercial network in Mozambique, covering the all the territory with more than 300 banking agents and uh, 176 branches. In fact, in 2017, uh, Millennium Beam became the first financial institution to have covered all the 154 districts of Mozambique, and we also have around 500 ATMs and more than 8,000 POSs, and Millennium Beam employs 2,400 uh, people. Finally, Millennium Beam have the best financial profile of the Mozambican banking system, which, I dare to say, compares extremely well against our international peers because we focus on a strong capital adequacy, profitability, efficiency, and a drive to maintain financial soundness. As we can see from this graph, uh, we have really, in the, these are uh, final numbers of 2016, a very strong financial position. And our achievements have been recognized internationally and we remain the most awarded bank in Mozambique having received many awards for many, many years from distinct organizations such as Financial Times, Global Finance, Euromoney, etc. Despite some uh, recent uh, difficulties uh, that Mozambique uh, enjoyed, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Mozambique uh, uh, faced remarkable economic growth during the last decade. And uh, the country have a huge economic potential, not just because of the natural resources, but also in other sectors like agriculture, like tourism, like energy, uh, among others. Uh, and we have no doubts about the potential of, of Mozambique. So we, we believe that uh, um, the challenges that Mozambique faces currently are temporary. And uh, the positive signs that we are seeing today, like the, the first uh, final investment decision that we will be announced this week, and also the negotiations that are ongoing with the IMF for the, a new program to, to help the country to recover, uh, I think these positive signs will allow that uh, the, the expectations about the positive future of Mozambique will, will, will come back. And uh, this will create the macroeconomic stability and the market confidence that is needed for the return of the investors, uh, the return of the uh, international institutions, the donors, uh, because uh, I think there are no doubts that Mozambique will have another very positive decade 
one front.